Hey guys, this is Entity from Deuces Cracked with a follow-up video on advanced fold equity calculations. In our previous fold equity videos, we've used an oversimplified version of an expected value formula. Our formula calculated expected value based on the size of the pot, our fold equity, and the size of our bet. We're going to update that formula to add one very important piece of information to the calculation. When we bluff or semi-bluff, we usually still have some equity when we're called. We don't lose our entire bet. So we need to update the formula to account for that. Today's video is going to show you how to get started on calculations that take that into consideration. Let's go back to the definition of expected value. EV is what we expect to win or lose over the long run in a given situation. Simply put, our EV is the sum of all possible decisions we can make. For a fold equity calculation, there are two main things that can happen. Our opponent can fold or our opponent can call. It's true that our opponent can sometimes raise as well, but for this video we'll be dealing with simpler examples where our opponent can only call or fold. Let's take a look at an example hand to dig deeper into one of these calculations. You hold Jack-10 of hearts on a 9 of hearts, 6 of hearts, king of diamonds, 7 of clubs board. There's $200 in the pot and your opponent bets $100. You check raise all in to $300 total. You think that your opponent will fold 40% of the time and you expect to have 25% equity when you're called. How profitable is your play? Let's take a look at our updated EV formula again. What we're really interested in first is the EV when our opponent calls. Fortunately, this is pretty easy to calculate. What we need to know is our pot equity against the hands that he calls with and the amount that we risk. In this case, we can see that our EV when our opponent calls is negative $100. Updating our EV calculation, we can see that we win $300 40% of the time and lose $100 60% of the time. Net, our EV is plus $60. You can also use this formula to determine how much fold equity you need, assuming that you know your pot equity when you're called. Just set EV to zero and solve for F, which is the probability that your opponent folds. In this case, solving for F shows that our opponent needs to fold one quarter of the time in order for this to be a good play. As our equity increases, we need less fold equity, and vice versa. Of course, this is only part of the work you'll need to do for practicing fold equity calculations. Now that you understand how the math works, it's time to start practicing estimating fold equity in different situations. Our lessons on maximizing fold equity and calculating fold equity touch on the different methods you'll employ to get a good feeling for how often an opponent will fold in a given situation. As always, if you have any questions, please ask them on the forums. This has been Entity for Deuces Cracked, signing off.